Hey, it's Shaves, and welcome to another edition of AnyTube Digest, where we go over the best and uh, not so best anime YouTube videos to come out this week from the 14th of December to the 21st of December. This is unfortunately going to be a much quicker digest. I actually don't know how it's going to be actually short this time, I swear, um, because I, I'm very busy today, very busy today. So uh, I'm, I'm recording pretty later and I have other things, unfortunately. So we'll see. We'll see how we go. But uh, I still hope you enjoy. I didn't think any of the videos I watched were not good. Again, <laughs> would it be? Um, so let's go to the videos I thought were decent, pretty good. Um, and I will say this one, like, overall, it, it's impressive, and I really like it, and, um, full disclosure, I am technically a part of their team, um, I make their lore videos, uh, I've edited a lot of their lore and, uh, Dev Diary videos, um, but had no real connection to the motion comic itself, uh, this is the second episode of Berserk, the motion comic from Studio Taka, that came out this week, and this has literally been two years since they put out the first episode, um, and they, like shortly after the first episode came out, I joined them, so it's been that long for me. Um, and I'm looking forward to what moves forward with episode three. And they're gonna have some. They have a Patreon set up now, and uh, new management. You know, trying to make things a little more streamlined and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, because you know this is a fan project and online and stuff with a bunch of strangers. So and that a lot of pieces have moved in and out over the year. I'm not gonna like spill some tea or anything like that. In in that regard but um i only put this in decent and not in the best because i don't know i don't think it quite matched my expectations of it uh from the first episode which are not that high uh, all things considered honestly um like i like i rewatched the first episode and i still really liked it and thought it was impressive um but there was just something about the second episode that that felt like the first episode was that they were really trying to sell you on the idea of a motion comic and this episode was trying to embody that idea of a motion comic a little more um, intensely. And I don't know if there was... Uh, the animations are fantastic, and there's really nothing you can complain about with that, with, given their, given what they're trying to do here. Um, in fact, I, I do prefer it over what they did for the intro, which, like, is a nice-looking intro, but it was, like... It was animated. It wasn't, like, the... Mo it wasn't a motion comic thing. It wasn't using... Miura's art it was completely it seemed completely fan drawn and that's not a bad thing inherently but then it's like we'll go for that then um I'm okay I love that but like if you're selling it as a mo like I, I watched the intro of the first one and I don't know I just I, I I thought it did a better job at selling you that idea even though it's not as, as nearly as technically impressive as this episode obviously everything is kind of ramped up in complexity um but you know it also doesn't help that like I'm not the biggest uh, <laughs> fan of this particular section of Berserk anyway. It's, like, not the Golden Age exactly. It's it's the first Black Swordsman arc, and this is covering, like, the second half of that. Uh, so I'm happy they got past this part of the story. Um, but, you know, and, and so it's, like, the you know, the actual content of the material, I was like, yeah, it's, it's fine. I will say that I noticed the, um, I noticed one section they see they kind of traced or they kind of uh, took after a sequence in Berserk 97 with the, the sword going around like that. Um, and I thought that was way better done than what they did in the first episode where they kind of traced over something from 2016. Not that that was like, I'm not like I'm, I'm allergic to 2016 like most Berserk fans are. It's just like, I thought that was better done. And I thought it was, oh, they improved in, in doing that sort of thing. Then that's great. And yeah, they, uh, all the animations are better, are more improved and things. I think there's just my, my lack, my kind of like, my enthusiasm with it is just with the material that they're adapting specifically, like the, that particular series of chapters, um, as well as just not having as much, I don't know, I, I wasn't as much of a fan of the direction of this uh, particular animation because, like, they didn't want to move any of the panels at all. And so it was just like, it just kind of showed you what was in the, what was animated in the panels, very isolated. Um, even though there's, you know, sometimes... Sometimes some like something that an animator takes a long time to work on, and then it gets panned up in a way that like they don't, you don't see all of it. I get that, but that's the that's the illusion with animation. There has to be a direction with that too. There's other things that the audience is not going to see. I think that's the process of animation. And so without that, I thought that this felt very stiff and very rigid to 
what was being animated and you had to show everything. That was just my impression of it. Um, I thought it could have been more creative with moving panels in. Cause like, you know, there's, there's some panels that like you couldn't bring up to pull, pull up to a full, the full screen, full fidelity sort of deal. Um, and it would have been fine to kind of bring some panels in and swap them and, you know, give some kind of direction and feel to it. Feel like it's a motion comic and not just uh, animating the comic. You know what I mean? And it, so, yeah, I just wasn't a fan of the particular direction that this episode had. Um, the Everything else is obviously spectacular and there's nothing I could I could. The animation's poor. No way. Absolutely not. And I do like the voice acting. Um and the and the music choices, of course. I I, just, I think that's what a lot of and the sound effects. Um, I think that's what a lot of people are going to see this for because they love the comp, they love the manga already, and they just kind of want to have it added with music and and voice acting and that sort of thing, as well as you know to see some of it move. But again, I I like the the economic choices here, but um, direction I just thought was a little um, rigid and didn't have much going for it. Like there wasn't a, a there wasn't a vision for it in that way. It was just kind of, here's the animation we did. It was, was kind of what it felt like. Jojo talks too much, as well as Sloan the female otaku, Sunwoo, and... Mm, there's a fourth person, and I'm not subscribed to them. And it's not like they... I checked the description. The, you don't link any... Like, Sunwoo um, put out his own announcement video, and Sloan did her, hers as well. But I only clicked on Jojo's. As like a watch later thing. I don't know. It was just a preference thing. I, know. I just wanted to mention it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but this is the fifth annual Kotatsu Annie Awards. Um, and it's a fan thing uh, that is hosted by those four creators. And it's going to be... Um, the the actual award show is going to happen a couple weeks from now on Sun Wu Kong's uh, Twitch. If not YouTube. Um, so I think that's great. And that's just something to... to shout out i like that jojo had some at least jojo's announcement video i didn't watch all of them uh i like that his had some reflection on the previous awards and like tweaking things and making um and talking about them more generally of like what direction they were taking it with and and things like that and uh, i like that they they had the anime of the war the anime of the award anime of the year award um specifically it's just a write-in and i think that's kind of interesting and seeing seeing that as seeing the results of that would be interesting um and i think they they're kind of facilitating it the four of them but then it's most it's almost entirely uh fan submitted in terms of who wins and things like that and uh it's fun so it's just something to to shout out point point your guys's way if you care you know i think that's kind of cool i like that um some anime youtubers are collaborating with each other and i also like that they're kind of taking into their own hands this sort of anime awards type of thing uh, and they've been going for five years at this point. That's awesome. I did check out Mother's Basement's video on the power of Sakuga, which, like, the, the thumbnail's kind of a little baity. Um, and it's just a general video of talking about what Sakuga is to newcomers. Um, and I thought it was fair and fine. Um, I just think it's more of a... more of a kind of a rant essay type of thing and doesn't feel like it has a strong thesis behind it or something like that or or all that convincing like you know um i do wish they focused a little he he focused more on the fact that a lot of sakuga has to do with understanding the people who make anime and learning these people's names um because like the whole sakuga community they're not simply about these particular moments that you're talking about but it expands broader into understanding how anime is made um and you learn about directors and storyboard artists and and animators um, and designers and all that. So I think Sarga has a broader because uh, it's it is just animation in Japanese effectively. Um, so they it, it I think it has a much broader thing than what I think Jeff was was painting here. Um, but it doesn't seem like a bad impression or, or like a wrong take or boring or cliche or something like that. I'm happy he talked about it and is um, expanding that knowledge to uh, his audience, his wide audience. I think it was cool. I did listen, sit through, uh, <laughs> um, you know, sitting through is as in like, you know, it's a long video. It's two hours. 
I, I can understand if you say you sit through my video, right? <laughs> um, Anime News Network put out a, a long video uh, reacting to the various trailers that were coming out for the winter anime season. It was a live watch party. They had a whole chat going. And it's uh, Lindsay Loveridge, Mike Toole, and I'm not as used to her. Uh, she does a, a couple of the videos on the channel, and she's um, and she she's done a couple of the top tens and stuff. Jackie Jing it seems. And uh, Jackie in particular, I think, actually had quite the charisma to her and the, the on-screen presence and um, was interacting with the chat a lot. And I thought I thought her en energy was really welcome. Not that Lindsay and Mike's was poor. It's just they're they're older. Right. So there's kind of a, a sageness to the two of them. And then Jackie's kind of like, ooh, actually, you know, she had kind of the, the more um, energetic feeling to it, I thought. But I like their insight. And um you know, they have their tastes and things like that, uh, that, you know, I agree or disagree with. I like that Lindsay was moderating with, with like, oh, by the way, this is kind of what it's about, or um, this is what's interesting about it, staff-wise. There was only a couple of um, of anime that she did that in particular with, and I think she, the one that she missed, that I, the, I they covered all of the show, all the trailers and stuff, but I think the one that she missed that was interesting um just as a heads up that I'm probably going to check out, uh, Shigeyasu Yamauchi, who is a veteran Toei animator and, and director, um, is directing the that one about the girls that are in the the, the school with the zombies. It's kind of like it's like a more serious school live sort of deal. Um, yeah, and, and so like Yamauchi at the helm of that, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm looking forward to, to checking that out or hearing about it. I don't know if I'll check it out myself. <laughs> but um, I thought that was one credit to, to kind of pay attention to. At least I thought so. And I was not a big name like Ikuhara or something, but I don't know. I thought it was something. Anyway, um, I did like listening through all this. And it was a good excuse to watch all the trailers and kind of have a better understanding of what was coming out. Because, uh, you know, all I hear about it is like it's a bunch of sequels and whatever. Um and I didn't really care as much. Um, I'm not much of a seasonal person these days. Um, but there are a couple that I'm like, okay, cool. I'll check out Vlad Love because I love my boy Mamoru Oshii. Um, that's kind of it. <laughs> Would it be? Beyond Ghibli put out a Tokyo Godfathers video as well as a spoiler-filled addendum um, talking about how everything is sort of connected and like not a single shot in that movie is wasted. There's just so many subtle details that you get that totally get skipped over and missed. It's sort of like a what you probably missed, <laughs> like a little uh, like big red arrow at the circle on a YouTube thumbnail. But Joe's a lot more tasteful than that. <laughs> um, I, I'm recommending this particular video because I thought this was the more interesting and kind of additive video. I like his I like the initial video that's kind of the spoiler free and just a general recommendation video. And he says at the end, it's like his favorite anime, you know, anime movie, um, which is cool. Uh, but, you know, I, I, think, I think that one just felt more of a generalized summary type of video. And it's Tokyo Godfathers. I, I feel like I feel like people know what that is. I feel like a lot of channels have made a Tokyo Godfathers video, if not this year, last year or the year before. It's the uh, it's 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 a perennial favorite. Um, so I don't know. There was too much to that that particular video. And I'm not, I won't, I won't spoil with, um, what Joe was, Joe's struggle with making this video in particular that he, um, shared in private with me. So I won't, I won't say that here, but, um, I could tell, <laughs> I, just, I was like, oh yeah, but I was happy you put this, this, um, this particular spoiler filled one. It's, it's not even that much spoilers. It's not that much spoilers. It's, it's not that much of a, a movie that I guess it could be spoiled a little, but like. I don't know. I think it's fine. Um, I don't want you to hide this video. I'm, I'm so I'm recommending this particular one. Um, I liked it a lot more. But yeah, you know, I get it. <laughs> um, that was cool, though. Good to see that. I watched this very long video from Leap Salon recommending 50 much watch, must watch slice of life anime. And I like the selections here because it was a lot of not so obvious picks. Uh, Leap Salon made a point to, at the beginning, show off a couple of very popular ones that weren't on that list because he felt more, he just felt more strongly about these other ones that he had seen. Um, 
and as well as uh, skipping out on a couple others that are very well known uh, that don't really have an available release, that they're not on Crunchyroll or, or Netflix or something like that, um, which I think is very fair. So that's why you're not going to see Hoji Majidori be on here. And I'm like, okay, fair, <laughs> you know, because um, I mean, that's never been available um, on that sort of in that in that capacity. But, you know, fine. But I think what that ended up be ended up kind of noticing for me towards the end is the the oldest show on in this list of 50 slice of life uh is kino's journey from 2003 and then the next oldest is mushishi from 2005 and then uh i think it's 09 is the next oldest with kaon it's like okay hmm. uh you know it, that's me being an old head i get it and also there definitely isn't as much slice of life anime in this uh in this particular frame that Leap Salon is, is referring to. Um, he does have another video that I didn't check out, but he had made previously of really trying to define slice of life, um, even though the, because the genre can be kind of lumped in with a lot of other genres. And so it's like, what really is it sort of deal? Um, I thought that the picks here were really well curated and a lot of hidden stuff, a lot of stuff that a couple things I had never heard of, which was like, oh, right. Wow. That's a surprise. I mean, that's a surprise. There's a lot of these shows I haven't seen, but I've definitely heard of. Um, yeah, and I, I liked uh, I liked uh, kind of the thoroughness that he went through all of them, gave the summary as well as his thoughts on them and stuff like that. And yeah, I thought it was nice. It was cool. I watched Aki Dearest's uh, kind of a new series from her with for, for Detective Aki. She's to kind of um, debuting a new character, even though she's not really putting on an air of a character or anything like that. Um, she's just kind of dressing up as one with like a little mustache and things. Uh, really nice intro too. Um, and I like this idea she has with um, exploring kind of the occult and, and folklore and uh, more kind of spooky stuff. Uh, Cause she, she does have kind of a history of that with her channel, um, but not necessarily in the aesthetics of her channel. She just kind of talks about it. Um, but I like that she's found a prop, uh, found like a, a vehicle, um, reference to my video sorry <laughs> if you don't know um she's found kind of a, a method of which to channel and uh show this kind of thing off and uh have the proper kind of like aesthetic to the video as well and i think that's really great so this video was called this japanese horror film is actually real and she's talking about um the ring and how like the character the name comes from this uh this kind of this historical um failed experiment sort of deal um and then the the well is actually linked to very old japanese folklore and um the you know the way she's introducing these things to you and and the the images she's using i think it's it's really great it it, cu it creates a, a sort of aesthetic and um i like that you know she again she's not like creating an, an entire identity or, or something like that um she's still being herself um, but just having that kind of the aesthetic and that representative character, I think is kind of neat. Um, and I thought this was well presented and seemed pretty well researched too. I'm not, I'm not much into this, this type of, um, con this, um, subject matter. So I wouldn't know if how accurate it actually is, but it sounds pretty, pretty well researched and, and good. So I, I liked it. That was good to see from her. And last, I'm going to talk about what I considered the best videos of the week. The things that, that really got me excited. And it's like, whoa, whoa I loved that. Uh, and the first is, of course, um, talking about uh, Novid 2020. Um, this is like a main video from Pause and Select where he kind of synthesizes um, the experience and having watched all 37 entries. <sighs> so, so um, you know, he released the, the playlist of those and um, talked kind of holistically about the experience. Um the the premise was very broad but um a lot of it ended up steering towards um general recommendations and then other people kind of did more specific analytical subjects and deep dives like that um so i thought that was really great and obviously I had a great presentation from him um and there's a lot of like levity and and riffing like that i thought that was awesome um and not only that but afterwards like the day after this came out uh, he did a six-hour live stream, um, talking with most of the create uh, most of the people who submitted, including myself, um, talking about their videos. And it was it's good that he had the uh, 
specific questions prepared and you know obviously it was very well read and all of them was very respectful for everybody i haven't listened to all of that that six hour thing because i wanted to um watch these videos myself and hopefully do a digest uh edition of of these submissions um so hopefully I get on that at some point. <laughs> Just a lot of videos, okay? Um, yeah. But hopefully, I, so I didn't really want to get spoiled to um, some of those videos with the, the six-hour thing. Uh, but for what this was with the with the overall uh, holistic idea of it and, and the experience that, that happened with it, I thought that was awesome. It was great to see. And thank you so much for hosting that, uh, Joe. I thought you did a great job. So, like, you know, I talk about, like, anime youtubers but like not so much like the debut of an actual anime um so the first i wanted to include this because it's on youtube and it's just kind of a cool thing um the first episode of vlad love debuted on youtube and it had the closed captions with english subs um it's written by mamoru oshi the original idea by him and he's writing all the episodes and storyboarding half of them um although this uh this episode was not one of them that he storyboarded uh, i think the whole series is going to come out later on but this was just kind of an early debut for it and i really liked it i watched it like twice um once once with my own and once with a friend and it was awesome i, I just like seeing um mamoroshi doing comedy again but the actual visual presentation was really unique and kind of stepped up to the fact they were working with Oshi, I guess. And then also Kenji Kawai music was really good. Um, but it had this like really good energy to it and an aesthetic that I thought was really bold and a little experimental in places. There was a couple shots that they kind of brought in some live action elements. And I was like, well, wow, um, I really dug it. And I thought the humor was good. I thought his writing in particular was good. But I just think like it's it's in the best because it's it's a fucking anime. It's 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 anim it's it's debuting on YouTube. I don't know another series that, I don't know another that's done that. That's not like an O and A or like a shorter thing. This is like a full TV length episode of, of something. And it wasn't, and it's not like also on Crunchyroll or something else. It's, it's on YouTube first on their official channel. I thought this was crazy. Um, crazy. Awesome. <laughs> you know, this is crazy. Awesome. But mostly crazy. Uh, a YouTube poop uh of uh loop on the third called a uh, poop on the thirst <laughs> and this is by um a content creator i'm I've, i am subscribed to on my private youtube channel sort of deal um the things and this is a classic um youtube pooper um ytp -er, i guess is better <laughs> it's more <laughs> less cringe i suppose um but he's been doing this for a long time um I love I love his shit and um I never thought he would do this for anime let alone a retro anime from like the 70s you know um so this is taking episodes from Lupin part 2 <laughs> the dub granted but like still freaking crazy awesome and it it was very classic with you know the classic uh sentence mi mixing and older older references and things like that and pulling stuff and i love youtube poops so fucking much um i i'm a real sucker for them um i enjoy the absolute hell out of them and, and like this is so gut bustingly funny uh, like one of his funnier ones um he's been putting out stuff very regularly because he has like a patreon and everything and he's doing this more seriously and it's, it's awesome um but it's so fun he's so good at this uh strongly recommend this this is hilarious please it's so funny and lastly um also funny, but also just more like crazy cool and like a, kind of a landmarker type of thing. Uh, longtime content creators Mega64 put out a Neon Genesis Evangelion in five minutes. Live action. You think, uh, cringe, whatever. But like, this is the same people that did the Dragon Ball one way back in the day, uh, as well as Metal Gear Solid. And they're actually really sharp guys in terms of the the writing um and not trying to be like super you know intellectual or whatever but i mean more like you can tell with the way that they're right the way that they're saying these lines and making these references to the show specifically ava 
I really thought they gave it a good, proper respect. Um, whereas it's so easy to kind of take the piss out of Ava and like kind of be mean spirited about it and just kind of cringe, uh, in that way. But there's certain shots and dialogue choices, um, that I thought they really like this show and want to present it in a fun, inventive way. You know, this is the whole thing where they, they don't use any C, any computer effects at all, uh, and it's all filmed right in front of them and everything. And uh, it's really creative and fun and funny. And it, I I think it's awesome. I was really, really happy to see that. Um, and uh, most importantly, that I thought that they really paid enough good respect to the series and to the creators. Um, and not trying to be mean. But yeah, I, I'd be repeating myself at that point. Um, I think it was great. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it, loved it. And yeah, that that's going to do it for this installment of Anning Tube Digest. Uh, sorry if, it, if it's too short. I don't know. I got to, whatever. I, I could have just skipped. I could have just not done this week. But, um, you know, I wanted to talk about some of these videos. Um, in particular, the poop on thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, the loop on uh, YouTube poop. Uh, <laughs> Mega64, too. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, I didn't want to miss out on any of this stuff. So, uh, yeah, sorry it was it's not super long, but um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my patrons, including Beamburst, Boo, Hazel, Kuiper, My Anime Pod, Najbeb, Tippy Mango, Unique Name Asaurus, and Yellow Cheese for supporting it. You guys are great, and all of them could be sending me request videos. But you know, I guess I guess we'll wait. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> what it be? Uh, you guys have a great week. Yo, peace.